Hi guys, this is Val from Val K Inc. and today we are working on a very special garage kit. This is the Ori 1-6 Bell Dandy with wedding dress figure. And after a quick opening and an inspection of the pieces, we can finally get started with this kit. I found her a few months ago and I just fell in love with the design. And I always like the way these box are packed because you get a little certificate that everything has been inspected and you also get your instructions and parts list with your figure. So what I always do is when I get a kit, inspect it all and if anything is wrong with it, I can always contact E2 if I really need a piece that is missing or broken. But luckily this kit came with everything and it all worked out very well. So with all of that looked at, let's get started with actual Bell Dandy. As always, we start with cleaning the kit with some purple power and water, a quick rinse and a quick dry of all the pieces. Next is all the cleanup, just a bunch of trimming and sanding. I always try to trim as much as I can without cutting into the piece, and then I just slowly work my way down with a various grades of sandpaper. Usually I start with something rough with 500, work my way down to 2000 grit, and finish off pieces with a polishing paper. That way I'm not cutting into anything too drastically when I'm cleaning up this kit. Some parts had a lot of flashing, but this really isn't a big deal. Just put a fresh blade on your knife and slowly work your way around the thin flashing, just cutting it away from the piece, and then just take your sandpapers and repeat the same routine just to clean up all of the edges. By the way, this kind of flashing is pretty common. You, you don't have to be worried about it. It's, it's no big deal. No big deal at all. After that, I like to do all my pinning. My general rule of thumb for pinning is any pieces that have support or loose connections need a pin. On to the fun stuff. Now we get to play with some putty. People ask what I use, and I've been using this Tamiya polyester putty for my last few kits, and it's really great. It's a two-part putty that you mix together, and the way you use it is you get it ready, set it to the side, and you pull out Vaseline. So for the pieces that you don't want this putty to stick to, you just Vaseline with a Q-tip or a small cloth, and then you can take your pieces with the freshly mixed putty, and you can put it into the slot or on the piece that will gain the putty, and then connect the two pieces. If you want further instructions and some in-depth tutorials, I highly recommend that you look up Leona's workshop. She is where I actually got the idea to start using this putty with her links in her descriptions. So check those videos out. She is a fantastic garage kit builder. The nice part about this putty is that it sets up within five minutes. So I highly suggest working with a little bit out of time and you can actually get to cleaning up your pieces and sanding just after 10 minutes. It really works well when you're moving from piece to piece and you can slowly take away the excess and then sand to a finer point once it's dry. For any parts that I know have a lot of the stability issues or will have heavy pieces attached, I like to pin and putty. So I'm just adding a little bit of wet putty and setting the neck because I know this girl has a lot of hair coming in the future. Uh, speaking of that hair... It's no secret that Bell Dandy has a lot of hair, and most of my kit cleaning came down to sanding and trimming all of these hair pieces. I had to pull out everything, all sorts of different size files, all sorts of different grit sandpapers, again moving from a larger grit to a finer grit, but yeah, I had to make sure all of these pieces were well trimmed and well connected, and I went ahead and puttied most of it and secured it together so that I could paint it more as one large piece because I know I'm going to be mixing a color for her anyway. And with that, prep work is done. 
I always put my kits together after the pinning and putty and sanding just to make sure everything fits perfectly before I do any priming. This is kind of like a second dry fit really. I just love the way she stands and everything worked really well. I did have to add in a couple places of putty just for air bubbles, a little extra furls on the collar, smoothing out some bumps on the hair and on the front of the dress. But otherwise, she's ready to go into priming. And then we can finally add some color to this kit. I always do my spraying off camera just because I tend to do it in the garage with the doors open for good ventilation and outside. Just know that I had to prime and re-sand a couple of times with this kit. I've never had a kit where I got away with one layer of primer. But after that I moved on to my skin tone, my white, and a little bit of metallic that I wanted on the sleeves. I'm going for these silk cuffs, which I will make a little bit brighter later in the video. This piece I used some old primer for. Well, we'll get to that later. For here, we are doing some details on the dress. I absolutely love the way these roses and small stitching is carved into the bodice, so I wanted to accent it with some metallic blue. Everything has a matte coat, so it's time to take all of my skin pieces and add a little bit of color and a little bit of pastel shading. It's important to matte seal your pieces before you start your shading, and always, always, when you are done shading, seal that in with another coat. So I'm adding a little pink to certain spots just to brighten it up, and everything else gets a darker skin tone shade. I'm gonna move on to the dress now because this is really why I wanted to do this piece. I really had a vision of having blue shading in the bright white areas and then making these pearl frills a purple to pink gradient. So I'm just slowly working my way down the dress like that. Uh, I used very light pastels for these and I'm using very little on the brush so it's not too heavy a stroke. I don't want these to look too dirty or too messy. Even the tiny pieces get the same treatment. A little bit of purple, a little bit of pink, and blue on the edges. Here is the section without any shading and the section with shading. Again, it's up to you for your own white pieces how much shading you want to put in. I really wanted this blue to ombre purple pink effect, so I went a little heavy. But there's a little trick to shading like this. After it's all sealed, you can come back in with your white paint and brighten up certain areas that you want staying bright white. I did that with a few of the edges on the bodice here. This is Folk Arts Color Shift White Paint. This has a beautiful pearl effect, and I really wanted to use this on a kit, specifically this one. Here is how it mixes up, and oh, it is so fun to see the pearl effect. I just, I love this shot. No real reason for including it. Time to see the magic in action. I can't wait. So of course, I start with only a little bit on the brush, as I can always build it up, and oh, that is lovely. And then bubbles happened? So this happens occasionally, sometimes with craft paints. After mixing them, they can retain bubbles. Just work slow and gently press the bubbles out while the paint is still wet, so you don't have them drying into the finished piece. Here's a close-up of that bubble effect that keeps happening. Uh, again, some pieces I would paint and I wouldn't have anything going on. Maybe it's just a reaction with how these bristles are handling this piece, but I found taking a smaller brush for smaller areas and pressing the bubbles out took care of that issue. Uh, not sure why that happened again, but for other pieces, just fine. Same paint for the blue silk cuffs that I wanted on her gloves.
And now a question about Belle Dandy's hair. It's kind of hard to finalize a hair color on a figure, especially when you have so much source material. She's kind of an ash blonde in the manga, but she has some variations in the anime. I ended up going with a brighter tone like from the movie, but still a little lighter than the example kit. Remember the old primer I used on a couple of the hair pieces? Well, here's why I shouldn't have used old primer. For some reason, the paint was having a reaction to this. The other pieces where I used new primer was fine, but I really can't explain why there was this kind of paint resistance. I ended up having to sand off this kit and reprime those hair pieces, and after doing that, it actually worked great. <laughs> Everything was fine. But yeah, in the future, just keep an eye on your materials and how long they've been around. While the hair was drying, I needed to tackle the flowers in this kit. I definitely wanted those to be my bright sources of color, so I'm actually working on a green gradient for all of the foliage. I tested out how I was going to paint this with this small rose and then repeated the process on the bouquet, but I thought you guys might be interested in how it looks just hand painting like this. I actually prefer hand painting, it's just what I'm more used to. And for all of these flowers, I just don't feel like masking that much off. So I'm just slowly working from my lightest color and mixing in a middle tone before I work my way down to the darkest shade of green. And any pieces that don't mix properly, you can always go back over once the piece is dry. So this is how I worked on the leaves for the flowers. And I also did the same for the bouquet, but I didn't film it. It didn't seem necessary when you guys could see the whole process right here. Speaking of the bouquet, I needed to decide what I was doing with it. Since I'm going for blue tones in this kit, I decided to go ahead and paint all of the flowers in the same blue, purple, pink gradient. Just individually though. Originally I was going to leave these flowers white, but when I spoke with family and friends, they said that that seemed like a waste and they really wanted to see me paint color. So here's a recording of just working on one flower. I ended up working on this over the series of many nights. While my flowers were drying and I had already shaded the hair, I went ahead and did some light shading on the feather base pieces. I'm only touching the very deep recesses with a little bit of mint green, so these white feathers stay white. Oh, and also this is a shot of the skin after I shaded and added the toenails to the toes. She just wouldn't be Belle Dandy without her markings, and I decided I really wanted them to be unique, and I used a shade of blue that I didn't use anywhere else on the kit, not on the dress or the flowers, so they would stand out. I actually recorded painting all of her face, but for some reason my camera died in the middle of it. I got just enough footage to show the markings alone, but she is also going to get eyes and gloss. The last thing I had to do with this kit was shade all of my flowers. I didn't want to go too heavy, but I did want to add something to them. So using a bright purple and a bright blue pastel, I'm kind of adding a watercolor effect shading where I'm mixing the two bright colors in the deepest recesses of the petals. I don't know if it stands out that much, but it helps make the flower look more purple. Same goes for the bouquet, I just really wanted to hit the green with a little bit of extra blue and shade a few of the flowers with a little bit of blue and purple at the bases of the bulbs that you can see. I swear the extra bonus to pinning your pieces is that you have pins that you can clip to so you can easily hold to paint and shade your pieces. <laughs> it was really difficult with this little bouquet. 
but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. The final piece is a nice ribbon to keep all the stems together, and that will be the end of the build for this particular kit. You guys, it's time for the glamour shots. Enjoy Bell Dandy. <laughs>